Welcome to Blake Street Goes to College. Ah, here what back with another college pod. Nick, a college expert. What's up, man? Hi. Hi. <laughs> and joined by the one and only Tyler. What up, big dog? Ah, that's that's what's up. A uh, big sigh. Big sigh. <laughs> it I, is I, the I would like to add publish Tyler to that as well now. Yeah. Is, thank you. I mean, yeah, I'm, I, I definitely have a sm- had a small role um, in the publishing, but, you know, it, it is cool. Woke up this. I didn't know that they were making a book out of the Prospects Live scattering reports. Uh, mm-hmm. I woke up today and they're like, yeah, we have a book and it's on Amazon and there's stuff in there that I did. So that was that was thrilling. So thank you very much for shouting that out, Nick. Um, and if if, if anyone's listening, big, big time, you know, prospect people, it's like an affordable version of Baseball America's, you know, magazine and stuff like that. So uh, not a bad, not a bad purchase. No, I, I saw that this morning. I was like, heck yeah, that's sweet. Um, yeah. Prospects Live. Tyler contributes for Prospects Live, does a lot of good things down in Albuquerque for them. And his uh, scouting reports for some of these guys made the book, I guess. So I will put the link in the description. So if you are a prospect head, I mean, you're listening to us, you're, you like the prospects and then you're listening to this college pod and you might like a little bit on a different note and go see Tyler's handiwork there. Uh, $30 paperback on Amazon right now, free delivery if you got the prime. So shameless plug prospect live is sweet too. And the fact that you do stuff for them is insane. So huge shout out. That's awesome. Um, It's just really cool. BSB is not releasing a book, so this is your one and <laughs> no, only <wait>. shot. <laughs> one, one day, though, we will. But... <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> we'll see about that. We can't even keep up with the blogs right now. Life is busy. If you are in school or have a kid in school or in education, it is the grind. It is the dark months right now. Um, everything's in the fan right before spring break. Barking periods are ending. Quarters are ending. Like It is everywhere right now. So us being who we are. We are, we're treading, we're doing all right, but hey, we're here every Thursday, releasing on Monday for you all, but enough of that. Um, BSB goes to college, just like last time, we started with Metro State in Denver, and the Roadrunners are running, just dominating on-conference fools, 16 and 6 overall. They did have their first in-conference uh, matchup this past weekend. Didn't go so hot, so Coach uh, Coach Strain's going to get on that. I know he will. Uh, one of three against the Colorado Mesa poop heads. I, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I I think at some point we'll we'll start to give them a little bit more respect. Um, I know we've been I think we've been called out for that before actually. Yeah. Only giving Metro State the love, and and the reality with that is that you know they play with an earshot of of Coors Field, so like they're the little Rockies. Yes. So let's let the little Rockies have their moment instead of making this about Colorado Mesa. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll, we'll give them their respect eventually, but that yeah. day is not today. Not until they follow us on Twitter, not until they say what's up and not until they become best friends with us and send me a sticker, send us stickers. So like, that's what the Roadrunners did. It doesn't take a lot to get our attention, but if you do, <laughs> we are all in baby. <laughs> so with that Metro state, or Colorado Mesa, you don't get any love. Metro State gets all the love. So real quick, shout out to some of the leaders here. Um, leading the team in slugging with more than, what, 70 at-bats. It's Tanner Garner, 771 slugging. Dude man already has 17 RBIs with five bombs. And then two guys are tied with seven home runs. Cam Uran and Zach Schuler, um, 768 slugging. Schuler has 35 RBIs on the season already. Got to love that. <laughs> There's some power. Like every time I see those tweets every night, it's like home run, home run, home run. This guy hit two rockets. So it's always cool when that is there. And then on the pitching side, real quick. Oh, where'd my whip thing go? Nope. Dang it, Mike. Um, we'll come back to it. Well, I'll throw in a, I'll throw in a shout out right now to a pretty good friend of mine, Cody Schultz. He is a, he's a runner himself. Uh, He's got five homers this year for, for Metro and he's not a, he's a small dude 
Uh, no, no offense, Cody. You're a small dude at I think five nine, um, <laughs> like one ninety something like that. And, and he's hitting jacks now. So he actually really, really cool. The 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 Roadrunners have a World Baseball Classic player on their team. Cody Schultz played in the qualifiers for Germany. Um, so he got to play. I, I didn't. I don't know who Germany played in the qualifiers, but he got to play in the WBC, just not like the WBC that everybody's watching. So that's, the road, see, that's a thing on Colorado Mesa. I mean, they could correct this if somehow I'm wrong. They don't have a WBC player. Metro State, they do. So the the more you know, that's what you come to BSB for. I love that. <laughs> that's awesome. I had no idea. Uh, sweet. Uh, huge, huge shout out, Schulte. You're, you're yeah. Big. There's and there's there's I gotta give another, yeah. There's two Schultes on the on the team. Uh, another Tyler Tyler Schultz is he's my age and you know we we are good buds we still play in a fantasy football league together so is he terrible um, at fantasy no he's he won two years ago and he was in the running again this year okay so he's he's not bad he just well rounded i love that all right yeah <laughs> no that, that definitely <laughs> and the pitching side we have a few guys that have gone 20 plus innings so far Jack Slamunsky, um, four and one on the season, one, two, two, two whip, which is awesome. 24 strikeouts in that time. And then Andrew Hayes, 26 innings pitch, but 32 Ks on top of that, um, with a three, one record. And then Reichel Arkelis, I know I said that wrong. I'm sorry, brother, but 26 strikeouts in eight to 18 innings. He was a stud last year for him. Still getting those Ks out there. His ERA is rough, but he's a he's a reliever, so we won't hold that against him right now. But those Ks Ks are fun. So you get dongs and you get Ks strikeouts at a at a Roadrunners game. So it's pretty much like Wiley I, Wiley Coyote trying to catch the Roadrunner, and you know who's going to come out on top. There may be some Acne Dean um, dynamite going off too. Uh, so huge shout out to our friends friends of the pod. Love those guys. Keep doing your thing and keep rocking it. We'll keep following you. All right. Last time we were here, Nick and I were here. D1 opening night. I think Nick was up for like 48, 72 hours, just living his best life. Um, take us through these last few weeks, Nick. Um, who stood out to you? What were you wrong about a month ago? What were you correct about a month ago? Catch us up with college baseball real quick. Uh, well, LSU has been as good as they've been advertised, but I I'm still... I, I know they're going to be good, but, you know, I mean, run ruling like central Connecticut state I'm still, I'm still on <laughs> them, but it's just, they, they out of the, I think out of the sec teams, they've played one of the weaker non-conference. Yeah. Looking at their schedule, it's not a lot of like they played West, Western Michigan, which is yeah. <laughs> barely a team. Yeah. Fun fact on those run <laughs> rules. I did my, I did my uh, dirty work here. Seven of the 16 games that the LSU Tigers have won have been run ruled easily could have been nine of 16 because they were up um, by 10 at the run rule time, but they did not agree to the run rule before those games started. So uh, the question really is, does money pay for championships in college baseball? And I mean, as of now, I think it, will, it looks like it, but we'll, we'll get an <laughs> actual result later on this year. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch. Like if they, if they fall short, of winning the college world series like is it a successful season or do they have to win the college world series this year well, they, ha they have successful? to win it they have they to have right? to. they do <laughs> like it's pretty much like the yankees of the 90s and the dodgers of late like went buying championships winning mm -hmm. has to be yeah. right okay mm -hmm. so no pressure on the tigers um my sister-in-law went there um so she has so i have some skin in the game in that way but all or nothing tigers go tigers um, what were you wrong about, Nick? Uh, I, I think if I can remember correctly, I was really big on Davidson. 700 capacity stadium, Davidson. Yeah. And they've, they've been very up or down. I know Michael Carrico, uh, I know he's out with injury now. So, you know, I, I, I was wrong on them, but, uh, I don't remember what else. Uh, there's probably a bunch. I mean, that, that's the beauty of it is, you know, you can say some stuff and, you know, and most of it might not be right, but, you know, 
when you when something's right, then that's that's the only thing you get to brag about. <laughs> right. That's all that matters. You, you push all the you one. push all that other stuff aside. <laughs> right. To be fair, Davison was your sleeper. You didn't have any big big hopes or aspirations for them. Oh, uh, they were your sleeper. They're seven and nine. But you were saying that Garrico guy, the catcher, yeah, he's, he's a yeah, stud. They're, they're out. Yeah, he's out. But Their pitching uh, hasn't really held up. Has he played much this season? Because he's one that uh, kind he played, of we're he watching. He played a little bit. He played a little bit, but I, I forget. I think he fractured something. Okay. So, yeah, that was a name that we were watching because uh, the Rockies have the ninth pick and Carico, Michael Carico, um, C A R I C O, um, was one of those names. So, just keeping an eye out. Um, Tyler, you weren't here a month ago. So, who is your sleeper team? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it's kind of tough now to to pin these as the sleepers. Um, but I, I'll kind of stick with with Florida State. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that they're again much of a, a sleeper at this point. But I'm a big fan of, of Jackson Baumeister. Uh, he just throws gas. Uh, they they've got some bats. It's definitely not a, a really you know potent lineup. But but James Tibbs has a 1319 OPS so far this year. Um, you know, I, I think they have a chance to, to make things move a little bit, but of course they're, they're already ranked in the top 25. So tough to call them a sleeper. I have not pinned down like a, you know, outside the top 25 team. I guess I could go with, with my New Mexico Lobos. They have, you know, had some impressive, uh, you know, an impressive start to the season so far. Last year was, was a rough one for them. Uh, I think they're kind of bought in. And they've done some LSU stuff with with run rules. I forget the the official count, but they played Northern Colorado, so we get our little you know Colorado tie-in. And, and let's see what is that? Um, Fifty nine runs in three games. So that Colorado's, was pretty good. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty good. Uh, overall in the season right now, they're eleven and five. They got a win against Oregon State, which is pretty big. Beat UC Santa Barbara. Uh, beat Minnesota. You know, Minnesota is not a powerhouse, but you know they're 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 decent. Uh, almost beat Texas Tech and almost beat Grand Canyon. Not they're almost wins, but you know they've been they've been a competitive team against good teams. So I'll, I guess I'll go with with UNM this year. Okay, I like that pick. They're do, doing much better than their in-state rival because New Mexico State is absolutely terrible. Uh, one in thirteen so far this season. So if you are going to baseball in New Mexico. Make sure you go see the Lobos, not the Aggies. So, shout out to also your uh, Pacheco's, Pacheco's on my mouth. Yeah, there. he. See? Yeah, see, bringing it back around for you all. We're here. Yo, We're you here. might see Jordan Pacheco at a game. Right? Yeah. You never know. I saw the, I, he was actually being interviewed and about talking about baseball, college baseball, and going back and being part, doing some stuff over there. I can't remember what it was exactly, but he's 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 involved over there down in Albuquerque. Um, yeah, because I don't know if I don't know if the, I I've said this on this podcast before, but he was he was one B the the Lobos hired a new head coach last year, so this is the the new coach Todd Brown his second year. Jordan Pacheco was the next guy, and he was kind of pissed that he didn't get the head coaching job at UNM. So I don't know if I don't want I don't want to put words in his mouth and say he was kind of pissed, but I think he wanted the job. So he was, he, there's no way that man wasn't fired up. Um, we saw how he fired up. He was against the robo ups in the indie ball league <laughs> a, few, uh, a few years ago. So dude, man was definitely fired up. If he didn't get that job, uh, we should, we should see if that guy wants to come back on. I love it. I love Jordan. He's awesome. Um, I had this, I couldn't figure it out. I was looking it up, but who is the winless team? So I kind of found that New Mexico state, there's one team. It's on the East Coast that has not won a game. Do you either one of you know who that was? St. Peter's. St. Peter's. <laughs> yeah, because there was like three teams that were all winless that were playing last weekend, and St. Peter's was the one that did not win any or something like that. So, yeah, if you're a St. Peter's fan, fourteen. Um, sorry. <laughs> go go watch go watch at Metro State. They usually stream their games, so you might be able to find them there. Um. All right. Positive. Some reflections on the top prospects so far. So we are, the Rockies have the ninth pick, the 50, no, 46th pick and 65th pick um, in the competitive balance, first round, second round picks. 
Um, so there's three in the top in the top 65 there. I feel like I missed one, but I didn't. So what are some names, some studs of you know, three in the top 65 that um kind of stand out to us some reflections on the top prospects so far that might be just national wide widely known. Also, Rockies fans can look look for when they're turn, tuning in on ESPN, ESPN Plus as we go. And we'll do snake draft, so you can't repeat each other. And I'm thinking of a number, one or two. Tyler, go. Two. That is correct. Two. So you get to go first. <laughs> Nick, you're right behind him. You go first and then second round, first pick. And you know how snake <laughs> drafts go. So, Tyler, top prospect we should be watching for. Who do they play for? I mean, what do they do? Where are they at? If if we're like picking these guys, as in like you know we're we're picking them because we really really want them. We're not just trying to present them in a in a fun order. It's got to be Hurston Waldrip out of Florida. Like he's he's a dude. Uh, I had to pull up the the mic stats earlier. The swing and miss rate on his curveball changeup. And slider are all over 60% this year. And that is, uh, you know, kind of ridiculous. Not just kind of, that's fully ridiculous. And his fastball is running a 25% whiff rate. So basically, guys can't really make contact with his pitches so well. Um, and, you know, he throws gas. His fastball is averaging 95 this year. Uh, you know, again, it's a solid four pitch mix. And, there's just so much upside there. I feel like he's getting lost in the, in the discussion. You've got Chase Dollander and Paul Skeens. Um, Harrison Waldrop. Like, he, why, why is he not, you know, right there with him? Uh, and maybe he's there at pick nine. And he's the Florida cat that transferred from Southern Miss, right? Yeah, that's, that is correct. All right. Yeah, I'm looking at his baseball reference page. Dude is insane. 40 strikeouts in 21 innings. Does he hold up in conference play? Because I understand that conference SEC conference play starts this weekend. Um, do you see that holding up in the SEC? I mean, I, I don't think he's going to run a 60% whiff rate on all three secondary pitches, but I think he's still going to look really, really good. Um, so I, I think things will, will take a tick back, but still going to be a menace. Okay. Hurston Waldrop of Florida. All right. Nick, back to back picks. Uh, well, I'll first go Kemp Alderman. Big old country, I guess not country strong, but uh, Old Miss outfielder who has just been just, I mean, he barreled a 118 mile an hour home run the other day. Um, he's just, he moved from the designated hitter role finally this year to the outfield. He's been, Excellent out there. Uh, as strong as just a bull, I guess would be the, I mean, he's just, Jesus. the, the step, the, the steps that he's taken this season with, you know, with his discipline uh, and just hitting just absolutely monster home runs. It's just, it's been incredible to watch. Yeah. Jude man, six, three, 265 pounds. <laughs> oh my God. That's an, and he's like a mid 20 year old cat from Mississippi. That's insane. And you said 118 off the bat. Yeah. He's hit, he's, he's hit a bunch over 110. A couple, I think at 112. Wow. I mean, it just, he like just sneezes on it and it's, it's, it's gone. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Well, I know I've mentioned this on this podcast before. I don't know when, when exactly it was. If his record still stands, he has the highest exit velocity in perfect game history at one of their showcases. Like American the number teams. one record for exit velocity at an event. All right. So you're, if you're watching Ole Miss, there you go. And Dude Man has walked 11 times, struck out 10. Just something to watch. Does he end the season, Nick? Does he end the season with more walks and strikeouts? I'm going to say no, but it'll probably be really close. All right. Love that. Yeah. OPP. Yeah, that'd be crazy. That he's would got, be crazy. He's got like Barry Bonds numbers right now. 474 OBP, 1287 OPS. All right. Country strong Kemp Alderman. If you have a first name, Kemp, you better be strong. That's a good name. All right, Nick. Start round two. Next name. Uh, I'm going to go kind of deeper down, but Isaiah Cup uh, Cuppet. 
uh, Ohio State. Okay. This uh, nine games this year. Let's see. So, uh, nine games, one start with a save. Previous weekend starter for the Buckeyes. Oh, no, I'm sorry, starter. That's weird that they do it that way. Four games this season, three starts, 18 innings, uh, one earned run, seven walks, 27 Ks. Real funky lefty uh, who throws a really good changeup and a slider with a good fastball. Um, not somebody, you know, who's going to overpower you, but it's really good, good stuff. Who's taken that, that kind of that step as the you know ace for a very young and very good and uh, very improving Buckeye team. Who's yeah. Really good this season. Yeah. They're kind of fun right now. Right. Mm-hmm. They're kind of out of nowhere. Um, Culpit, is it? Would you say his uh, delivery is kind of what's making him? Yeah, it would. It's a mix of the delivery and the pitch, the the pitch movement. A little bit of both, but he's somebody that definitely has put himself. You know, he was. I mean, he's been good. You know, his entire career at Ohio State, but you know, he this season he's gotten. You know, he's not giving up as many runs. You know, he's not walking as many batters. Yeah. It's definitely an intriguing arm. Yeah. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. 27 strikeouts in 18 innings to seven walks. Culpit. Culpit. No, there's no L. Culpit out of Ohio State. All right. Nice. And some some Mike stats on him. Uh, sliders running a 56 whiff rate. It's pretty, pretty solid. It'll get the job done. Uh, yeah. 431 OPS against him this year. Um, that is... I think what it. they consider to be good. Yeah, that is definitely good. You like that. All right, Tyler. This coming coming back to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Back-to-back <laughs> picks. Oh, I get oh so wait, we're each picking four. Three. No. Oh, it's three. round it's okay. round two. Yeah. Three picks. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna snag up Tommy Troy out of Stanford. He is a, a dude he's gonna play. Probably, you know, second base at, at the next level. Um, but he's playing some shortstop right now. And uh, the dude has really underrated pop. Like, his the exit velos off his bat are, you know, top of the class. He makes a, a pretty good amount of contact, you know, good bat to ball skills. And this season, he's running a, so far 553 on base percentage. And kind of the knock on him in the past was like, you know, he's going to be a good hitter, not a great hitter. Right now, it's looking like he could be a great hitter. He's got, you know, again, huge raw power, potentially plays some shortstop. Like, that's really valuable, really rare. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. I think as the season goes on, if these numbers hold, he's going to be getting a ton of top 10 hype, even though he's a guy who is like a fringe first rounder kind of coming into the season. Okay. Like that. Um, fun fact. Him and Copit played on the same uh, summer league ball, Cape Cod League baseball teaming. And oh, where'd he go? Um, and co to it in the Cape Cod League this uh, summer. That's so fun little connection right there. No, that's and uh, that's a Mike, a huge victory for Mike right there. Yeah, you only get that on BSB, you don't get that anywhere else. All right, who's your third pick? Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm back to the snake here. draft. Yeah, uh, it's it's a hard concept. It's fine. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm going, and I think I I saw in the rundown that your, you know, your team this year is Wake Forest, and so I've got to dabble in some Wake Forest. Uh, not with Rhett Louder though. I'm going what? with Brock Wilkin. Oh, uh, the the third baseman. Uh, thirteen homers already this year. Um. I think that speaks for itself. 13 homers this year. I, I think he's always gotten less credit than he deserves as a hitter. Like, you know, he is definitely not a polished, like, you know, 300 hitter, but he's not a huge swing and miss guy. I think he just gets, you know, counts deep and he, there's strikeouts are going to come, but he's, he's actually a decent hitter and he has like 70 grade power. So that's really shown up. Like the fact that he has 13 home runs in 18 games, like what is he going to finish at like 30? 
Like I think we're looking at a potential 30 home run hitter in college baseball. It it probably with with how juiced the balls are this season, I imagine 40. I mean, oh, 40. I mean, 13 in non conference. I. I mean, I don't know. I don't with how much how with how much they're flying out this season. It, it, it's that's the thing. Okay, so something to watch out. Forty home run. That, that's never been done before, right? I have no idea what a home run, good home run I'm, season is in college baseball. I want to say, what is the 40, record? Forty-eight. Uh, okay. Pete, okay. Pete and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna butcher it. Played for Texas. Pete Evangelia, I believe is how you would pronounce it. Do you remember how long ago? No, no, I, I don't. 48 home runs. It's insane. No, I mean, I, yeah, because they don't play that many games. Because they get like, to get yeah. to get 30 home runs even is, is ridiculous. Yeah, because <laughs> looking at um, Wilkins reference page, he had roughly 300 plate appearances last season. So he's hitting a dong at least one out of every 10 home runs to get 30 or i'm sorry plate appearances that's a lot 46 yeah. you're looking at one out of every four one every five that's crazy I mean, yeah he's he's a little bit like a, a camp alder like nick said sneezes and the ball is is leaving the park so no it's just yeah i this is going to be a fun year for college baseball because of that you know a, a lot of guys with really big pop look like they have really, really, really big pop, and it's just a lot of fun to, to see. Yeah, um, fun fact, making this connection again. Um, did you know Brock Wilkin is from Albuquerque, New Mexico? Wait, is that actually real? <laughs> yeah, he is about to be 21 years old. Oh, uh, yeah, I see that baseball reference. From he went to high school. In Albuquerque. He went to from... high school in Florida. However, I need to, I need to figure out this story. Well, there you go. Something to dive into. Um, yeah, Brock Wilkin. And I also believe he is in the tied. Oh, yep. Tied for the lead in home runs in college baseball behind uh, Cagillion, known from Florida. A sophomore for Florida is has 13. Yeah, so I think there's a tie or one or or Caglion. Clag- Mr. Jack C from Florida uh, <laughs> are tied in dongs. Mr. Shohei Otani, college baseball. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, Nick, end it. Top prospect that we've been kind of watching out for. Pull one up here. I didn't have. I only had two. Um, so let me pull up my board here. Let's see here. Let's see. Not even our experts are ready for what BSP will bring. <laughs> so. If that puts anything um, in perspective. I don't. I don't know if I've talked about him before, and I, I know he's having, you know, uh, isn't having a great season. But Eric Swan, uh, Middle Tennessee, uh, up to a hundred. He's one. He's been one of my uh, favorite arms. I saw a clip of him last season. You know, the control really isn't there, but it's just, it's some of the if you watch you know footage or, or film of him, it's just, it's some of the easiest you know upper mid to upper nineties, you know, you, you can ever just kind of watch and see. It's just, it's absolutely ridiculous how just athletic he is. You know, the command is, isn't really there, but I mean, the stuff is there and the fastballs up to a hundred. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You can kind of see why the command wouldn't be there. Yeah. Six, mm-hmm. six, 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 righty. All right. right. Actual fire throwing fire <laughs> yeah middle tennessee hitting 100 at 21 years old all he's right one of the, he's one of those guys that like would probably do better under like mlb like an mlb development right that, that's uh, that's oftentimes the case so maybe a la- late late round mid to late round sleeper Eighth, traffic. yeah, yeah. Okay. somebody you know an organization like the rays yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> those those uh swap them out for another prospect all right, Eric Swan. And Eric spells his name with a Q. Fun fact there. That's all I got on that one. <laughs> all right, so big three names. Like, there's some of those names I was aware of and some not so much. Um, and the, the connection's always there. So, again, the Rockies have number nine, number, like, 35 um, draft picks. Nope, 46. I keep saying 35. 46 
are their first two picks there, no compensation picks this year. So just names to look out for in there, and we'll probably mention them again next month. We're going to try to make this a, week, a monthly thing. So keep an ear out. We'll keep back coming back. Um, did you guys hear about that 24-hour baseball game? I actually did not. So you, this is um, this one's on you. I was hoping you would have, so I wouldn't have to talk about it. But <laughs> <laughs> there is Denison University took part in history on Tuesday. They're playing in this uh, classic snowbird oh, yeah, classic. Yeah, how sure. the um, teams from the north go to the south, and they're playing down in Florida. Um, a game they beat Arcadia twenty-five to twenty-three in ten innings. Game only lasted ten innings, but it still lasted. 24 hours so the teams played late into the night on uh, march 13th they began play at 11 o'clock on march 13th and then they had to come back the next day where the game ended at 11 15 11 10 on the next day um earlier this week they were tied 23 23 after eight innings and six hours where they called it it's too much 23 to 23 six hours eight innings um and they had to come back the next day to finish that only took two innings <laughs> two runs the next morning but absolutely insane um not sure what division these guys nope d3 d3 yeah. d3 baseball that, that, at its that's, that's what you get at, that's what you get at that level yeah <laughs> i've going to some nai games around town here the pitching is not always the best <laughs> and the hitting definitely takes advantage of that and that seems like what is screamed here. Uh, those poor parents. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if you're going D3, your parents are the ones that are in the stands. Six hours. Would you guys have sat there for all six hours? Yeah. Probably. I mean, like, let's say you're an alum of the team. Like, you played on the team less than five years ago. Are you sitting, are you sitting there for six hours? I mean, the weather's nice. Probably, I mean, probably it'd be fun. I can imagine. You know, Denison's Denison's a, a a very good baseball program, ranked here, thirteen, you know, I believe. Yeah, thirteen, fifteenth. Yeah, they're, they're really good. I mean, sure, yeah. You know, I don't know. After a while, you know, if you your heart can take it, but <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you have enough sunscreen to hang out. Uh, so, yes, yeah, just insane. I would not stay there. Um, even if I was an alum, I love baseball, but six hours and the game's not even over. And again, it's D3 baseball and no offense, but like, you know, the baseball is not the best that it possibly could be. So you're watching not so good baseball at the same time. Um, So (laughs) there's that. So with that being said, what are some of the less positive top prospects that you kind of noticed? And we'll just do two picks. Nick, you go first. Tyler, you go first. Nick, you go second. Tyler, you go second. Um, Some less positives that you guys have seen so far this season. Wait, I'm, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to steal one from Tyler because I don't have any Dang. pulled up here, but I, I think he could probably agree with me here. Enrique Bradfield. He was yeah. the name that you dropped that would be the yeah, guy I, that well, you plug yeah. in to the Rockies team right now to man center. So well, I, yeah, I mean his speed and his defense, you could absolutely it, it was just you know, if the if the hitting, you know, he's walking a ton still, which is good, but you know, he's not he's not slugging the ball, which is you know. Kind of was, you know, the concern, you know, he does not really the best power, but, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, didn't really do well in the Cape, you know, is off to a slow start this year. You know, there were always going to be kind of those questions, you know, could he, you know, hit for power? It wasn't always just the contact, it was for the power. You know, and that, that really hasn't shown three extra base hits in 18 games. I don't know if he has one tonight against Old Miss, but. Yeah, that's, yeah, that'll do it. 15 walks. So. Yeah, he's, he's got a great, a great eye. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's that, you know, can he hit for a little bit more power? Otherwise, you know, he's going to fall at the, you know, second, third round because teams yeah. aren't going to. Right. Draft a, you know, a high contact guy. Because I mean, he could absolutely put, play center field tomorrow in the big leagues. Yeah, that's yeah. that's never going to be a question with his speed and his his defensive ability. So, beginning of the season, where would you have drafted him? Roughly, what round? Where would you draft him now? Top ten, beginning of the season. Top ten round. 
they're a top 10, top 10 overall. Okay. I would so I would still probably put him in the first round, maybe back end, like, you know, comp- compensatory pick. Okay. It's just a matter of, you know, if you, if you believe, really believe, you know, that he's going to be able to hit for a little bit of power. Okay. Yeah, you're, it's always concerning when your OBP is a, higher than your slugging by almost 70 points. So that's a big one. That kind of sucks to hear. I was, <laughs> I was hoping that one would be there. Uh, Tyler, who's your guy? I'll, I'll, I'll start it off with Travis Honeyman. This is a guy that I, I think was going to be a sleeper to sneak into the top 10 because he's just a really rounded outfielder. He's average or better in every regard. But – and it's not like he's playing bad. Uh, you know, it's a, a very limited. He's got an 835 OPS, but this is a guy who I, I don't, I think if he doesn't take that step forward last season, 908 OPS, six homers. I don't think if, like, if he doesn't take a step forward, it's hard to justify him being a top 20 pick. Um, you know, he's not a, a, a really fast guy. He's like a 50, 55 runner. Uh He's probably a corner outfielder. So if he's not slugging uh, and and getting on base like a like a madman, it's just you know we're kind of in that Enrique Bradfield conversation. Like it's hard to justify the preseason ranking him. He was a guy again getting a lot of top fifteen, top twenty hype. I, right now, I don't think you can justify that because nothing looks remotely exciting. Everything's just good right now. So. Uh, he's someone I, I I thought maybe was going to have a really huge season, but been the, the complete opposite of that so far. Uh, and it's it's not going to get any easier playing, you know, ACC competition all the time. So we'll we'll see how things go with him. Still a guy I like if he can turn up the gas, but uh, definitely been disappointed thus far. Yeah. Yeah. He was a prospects live uh, preseason All-American. Uh, so when you kind of come out the gate the way he is that's and you have that kind of title on you like that that's a little little rough coming out um yeah some other names on this preseason all american just put in perspective right uh michael carico uh tommy troy brock williken uh enrique bradfield um these are some names on there so just put it in perspective that kind of it's kind of a downer all right i mean that's what this segment is just downer We'll bring you back up. I promise. Relax. Man. <laughs> uh, all right, Nick, another name. Hopefully you found some time to get into the, the dark web there. I, I'll be, I really don't, I'm not really, <laughs> I, I, outside okay. of Bradfield, you know, I'm not really, it's sometimes it's, you know, you, you want to keep up with all the guys, but sometimes, you know, you, you know, you don't really know, you know, I know Bradfield, you know, Travis Honeyman, definitely, but I really don't have another one. Okay. Off the, right. off the top of, I'm sure if, you know, if I went through, I could probably, I just, it, it's, it, it's the point of the year where it's like, you know, guys are slow. It's cold. You know, yep. you really want to see, you know, conference play. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll give you that. Got any, another name, Tyler. I, I do. Um, and this is another one. I'm just being a, a, a nitpicky guy. And this is actually, I can't say my, absolute favorite player in the class but he's a guy that i'm kind of you know hanging my horns on a little bit and that's Braden taylor out of tcu i thought he was going to put up like absolutely monster numbers this season but he's gotten out of the gate kind of slow and he, and his carrying tools really is you know his bat uh i i thought I, and i still do think you know he's like a 65 grade hitter but, you know, to start the season, he's got more strikeouts than walks, not making the best contact. Uh, he does have four homers, which for him is, is a pretty decent pace. But, again, this is a guy I thought maybe he's putting up like an 1,100 OPS, uh, walking like twice as much as he strikes out or close to that. And it's been the opposite of that. So, he again, he, yeah, he's a guy – maybe my favorite prospect in this class relative to how other people view him. I think he's a, you know, really good third baseman above average speed, above average power. And again, 65 grade hitter. But right now, if you were to call him a 65 grade hitter, people would, would look at you a little funny. So all right, um, I'm sticking with it, but this is kind of a call to arms 
for Braden Taylor. It's right. time to start <laughs> sending some missiles over the wall. Yes. Give us the dongs at the juice balls. Like, come on, man. You can do it. Um, all right. So the negativity is gone. All right. <laughs> kind of. You know, umps being umps. This was ridiculous. This ump was being a punk um, a few last weekend, I believe. Um, it was terrible. It was no good. Calls this guy out. So there's obviously a disagreement um, on some of the pitches between the batter and the ump. But this guy strikes out the hitter. We'll put it. I don't know where I'm going to put the link. Strikes out the hitter on a ball that is four or five inches way outside, barely above the ground. And the ump rings him up for the final ump walks away, leaves the stadium because he knew what he just did. Uh, it was terrible. And you know it's bad when the opposing catcher tries to hold you, the batter, back from saying anything to the ump, knowing, like, yeah, that was terrible, but this isn't the time or place. It was Mississippi Valley State versus New Orleans. Um, you can just tell the ump was over it, the ump show. And what was great about this is that call was so egregious. He is suspended indefinitely by the Southland conference. He is not going to be umpiring a game down there for a long time um, because of his poor showing, which should be happening more often from umps. So you are a terrible ump. We are going to make sure you can't umpire anymore. But if you all can see this video, I'll try to find a way, probably post the link in the, in the description here or on the Twitter uh, share, but just insane. I don't know if you guys were able to watch it, but it's pretty yeah. terrible. I mean, it, it is just sad, and you see, you see in the player's reaction, like you just robbed, like you just robbed me. Uh, every plate appearance matters. I mean, they all matter roughly the same, but they all matter. And you know, maybe that's a plate appearance that he hits an absolute missile, but we don't get to know what would have really happened. Um, you know, the, the the video starts one one count, and it's two balls in a row are called strikes. So you never know what's going to happen. And, and yeah, the, yeah, it, it's egregious. And I, this the, almost doesn't feel like enough, but it's all that really can be done. Right. The definitely, the ump definitely took a, a fence on the second strike call when the batter was jumping up and down, who's a little animated about it. Probably not something you should be doing in the box, but no way. But it was a really be. bad call. So. It, it, both were bad. <laughs> like clearly both were balls, not even close. Uh, just, terrible let the kids play don't be ridiculous it's not about you and we we're on board for good umps but like if you're trying to be a showboat and this nonsense taking the game away from the kids that what people are there for watching for you should not be on the field so good kudos to the conference actually like suspending them so um indefinitely so we'll see if it's a full season i'm sure we'll hear something about it i've not heard anything from the empire apologizing that's something i've been following closely so i think he's just a jerk so we're just gonna go on on record saying that march 10th new orleans versus mississippi valley state um ideal and realistic rockies picks as of today i think we did a little bit of this last time nick last month um who are some names Whoever speaks up first gets to go first, so that way Nick can't steal again. Who are some names <laughs> that the Rockies should be looking at in the ninth, 45th area that we can go with? I'll, I'll just keep the train rolling on Braden Taylor, and so I don't have to say a whole lot there. Again, probably my favorite prospect in this class relative to just the way people speak about him overall. Like, you look at prospect rankings, and he's typically, you know – 10 to 15 that's where a lot of people have him I, I think he's top five maybe six uh again just he's been a prodigious hitter in the past and I think there's a chance you could put him at shortstop at least for a little bit and see what happens if he's a shortstop if you can get him to play shortstop at all like there's a really really intriguing profile there and you know worst case he's like Ryan McMahon and you could play him at second and third base I think he definitely has the mobility to play second. Uh, just, yeah. I, I hope I can find someone one day who thinks about Braden Taylor the same way I do. Like, <laughs> I want to see more love on Braden Taylor. Braden Taylor. Yeah, his, 
his freshman numbers a few years ago are insane for TCU. Just absolutely nuts. And he did play some shortstop um, his freshman yeah. season. And then uh, his summer league ball that year when he was 19, played some shortstop. But since then, it's all been third base. However, we're not looking at that. Um, all right, Braden Taylor, TCU, Horn Frog, Nick, realistic draft I'll pick. Give- I'm going to give one uh, college and then I have two high school kids here. I know this is college, but they're worth, uh, I'm going to go Jacob Gonzalez uh, out of Old Miss shortstop. Um, I love, I've loved him ever, you know, since he, he's with the program. Uh, he's one of the best. He's been one of the best hitters the last three seasons in college baseball. The swing is just amazing. The eye at the plate is just incredible. His defense is really good. Um, you know, I know the Rockies really don't need a shortstop, but you know, the, I do see maybe he could move off of sec short, maybe you know, be at second. The Rockies need you know good infield depth. They need left-handed hitting. I it's just it's such a profile that you just you almost drool over because it's that kind of guy that if he puts everything together, which isn't much that he needs to put all together, it's 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 a five tool player. Okay, with what he offers offensively defensively and just just even like as a person yeah i would say your bias is showing again but if you can <laughs> i'm just I'll, I'll wear it on the shirt <laughs> it's, just, it's it's one of it's one of those players that you love to watch play for your yeah. team and you hate that you know it's gonna it, it, you know you, you know it's going to end because he's going to get drafted right yeah i mean his numbers speak for everything that you just said, it's not just your bias, but I had to throw that in there. Yeah, 17 walks to nine strikeouts, another number. It's just, I always like to look at that first. Love that. 529 OPP, 425, 524 slugging. Uh, just doing it for Ole Miss. All right. And give us one of those uh, those high school names that you're, you're talking about, thinking about. Uh, well, I'm, I'll go with the first one. Uh, Cam Johnson, who uh, is one of those vaunted and vaunted vaunted whatever uh lsu commits okay. uh, out of the img academy which is essentially they just like breed baseball players in a lab but uh, <laughs> i saw a few weeks ago he's been at least early on here he's been from the left side 96 99 touching uh i believe 100 as a high schooler yeah or Jeez. 97 yeah um Jesus. a couple of, yeah yeah it's it's yeah i mean he's been he's been loud before but some of the stuff that he's showing, I mean, 96, 99. I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous high school arm. Yeah. It's, it's not something that I had on my radar, but you know, I mean, it's athletic. It's. Yeah. It's a hundred. <laughs> like, it's I mean, a hundred at, at 18, 19 years old. I can only imagine me as a 15 year old sitting in the box and watching that come in. Oh, those four kids. <laughs> that to face them. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. IMG, man. They just, like you said, just, just breed baseball players. Got another name for us, Tyler. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this guy is truly in play at 35. I think it's a little optimistic to think that's possible. I'm trying to check where he is on MLB's rankings. Yeah. He's, he's ranked at 28 on MLB's list. So shows you maybe not making it out of the first round, but Kyle Teal, Virginia catcher. I think he has a case for being the best hitter, you know, take power out of the equation. Um, I mean, power, power counts for something as a hitter. You have to make good contact to get to, you know, rake in hits. But like, when you think about the the contact ability, the plate discipline um, and and kind of factor in that quality of contact, I think there's a case that Kyle Teal is like the best hitter in, in the class. I mean, and right now, 11 walks, four strikeouts, 578 on base percentage. Uh, we saw it a bit last year, 402 on base percentage with 41 walks and 36 strikeouts. And again, he's a catcher. Uh, I don't know if he's like a yes. good catcher long term. He's not a great receiver. Um, you know, his blocking could use a little bit of work, but if he could play catcher and hit the way that he's hitting, like that is a really special profile. Um, maybe th- there's probably double digit home run power in there. I-, I think in terms of his raw power, he definitely could be a-, a double digit home run guy, but he's got 17 career college home runs. Um, 
So definitely not a, a big time power guy, but I think that's mostly a product of his approach and, and the way that he's trying to, um, you know, impact the game. And that's just as a guy getting on base a ridiculous amount. So yeah. Kyle Teal is a guy, I, I think he's probably going to end up going, you know, in the, in the twenties based on the way he's hitting so far, but maybe teams don't see him as a catcher and kind of fade him for that reason that he's just a bat. Um, but the Rockies always need good bats. I, I think they get in a, in a habit of valuing, the full profile a little too much and then you're left without a playable bat and Kyle Teal I think he's a guy you could probably throw him against major league pitching and like he'd hold his own today Mm -hmm. yeah and that's without touching the minor leagues and stuff so I I think there's a really fun bat there I I just really want to see a guy in the Rocky system who's just a you know a grinder at the plate like not giving you anything and and that's what Kyle Teal is yeah, that professional at bat, the uh, Michael Brantley, so to speak. Yeah. Um, we don't have to talk about it now, but we'll put it on Raiders. Robo umps, Major League Baseball, catcher doesn't become as relevant. And then, then like you get guys like this that can hit, do their thing behind the plate, but not might not have to be that great defensive catcher. So like Gary Sanchez might be back in our lives in a in a <laughs> few years because dude man's still a free agent. Um, but all right, I like that. Kyle Teal out of Virginia. All right, I know what you wanted. One more high schooler, Nick. Go ahead and drop that name. I'm gonna I'm gonna go really hot take here. I'm gonna go Colt Emerson first of all. He's probably. I'm gonna say right now, top ten pick in the draft. He'll end up being, if not out of high, if not, you know, one of those rare cases he doesn't, you know, even get drafted when after he goes to college. But he is one of my favorite prep bats, if not my favorite prep bat this season this year where is he playing at right now john glenn high school uh here in ohio okay all right really just i mean easy swing um one of the more i think underrated prep bats as well probably not in terms of quality maybe the best but i think he's maybe the best um shortstop right now probably will play second or third. It's just, it's Auburn commit. It's just such an easy swing and profile that, you know, he's, he's probably, he's going to be a first round pick, maybe not 10. I think he, I would take him top 10, but. Okay. All right. I, I love, um, love his profile. All right. I can jump on board with that. Um, all right. How realistic is it that the Rockies draft my guy, Rhett Louder? at the number nine spot? I think very realistic. Um, maybe not the most realistic option, because I think I think he's sort of like a – I don't want to – I think he's a better prospect than Gabriel Hughes, but in terms of like the stock, I think you look at Louder and Hughes where both guys projected to be late teens kind of picks. Hughes maybe even a little bit below that. But the Rockies, if they like a pitcher – I think they're going to pounce on them. Yeah. So Louder's definitely a guy that offers you some, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's big time appeal with him and who knows exactly what speaks to Bill Schmidt the most. Maybe Rhett Louder is oozing whatever that is. Um, But obviously he could definitely get it done on the mountain. So if that was the pick, I think we would all be pretty happy with that. Yeah. I, I would be pretty stoked about that. So realistic, because I think he's number 14, number 15 on the MLB top prospect list right now. Uh, so definitely a thing that they, they might shoot forward. Um, all right, guys. Anything about college baseball that you want to add to it? Teams that are badass, sleeper teams that you want to throw out there. Do you want to redeem yourself, Nick, because Davidson is terrible and lost their, their stud catcher? I threw the name out Rutgers baseball who had a dream season last year and are eight and seven on the year uh, before conference play. So my sleeper pick is terrible also, but I'm not an expert like you are, Nick. I'm just saying, um, do you want to redeem yourself? Anything, anything that you're excited about again, conference play for sec starts, um, this weekend conference play around the um, nation has been starting, I guess, 
what am I watching for these next this next month until we meet again to college, talk college baseball? What are some things that uh, the casual should be watching other than uh, Metro State baseball? Uh, Texas A&M uh, is a team. They've got some good talent, but I, I, I saw their, their, their next, I believe it's their next three. I believe it's LSU, Old Miss, and who is the third one that I, I remember reading? It's just it's it's such a ridiculous like three game weekend SEC. Yeah, they get number one LSU uh, at home, at number two Tennessee, and then at home against number three Old Miss. What? And then, yeah, and then they, well, then they still also then have to play Florida, Arkansas, and then uh, Alabama. Dude, the gauntlet. That's yeah, SEC it's, though, right? That's yeah. Insane. Well, that's a, yeah, it's SEC. I, that's just how they line it up. It's it's ridiculous. One, two, and three. And Texas, I mean, they're good, thirteen and four. You know, they they beat A uh, and M, but it's just it's such a ridiculous, almost comical, just how rough. Yeah, because I mean, though that that stretch, you know, you you win, maybe you go three and six. You know, you're you're still in decent, but I mean, that 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 that's yeah. almost like a season ender, right? That's the make or break know. point. Like you're gonna yeah. learn a lot about yourself in that your team that those three weekends that's insane oh a and m what about you tyler what are we watching what are you looking for i i think a, a little bit more love than the state of texas uh texas tech <laughs> they are yeah um i i think they're i don't think people expected a ton of them th- this year but they you know are currently first in the big 12 at least by by pure record and they've got some guys who really I don't want to say came out of the woodwork because that would sort of underrate them as a whole, but uh, a few guys who are just bawling out of their minds, Gavin cash, who's a second year guy. He committed to Texas originally played there for uh, last year. And now he's at tech seven early home runs. He's going off Dylan Carter. He's got five early home runs. And then you've got an Austin green with 16 walks and just four strikeouts. Kevin Basil. 16 walks, nine strikeouts. So, like, they've got this really, really good core in their lineup. Uh, whoever their hitting coach is, like, he is, he's getting them in the right places. And then they've got a sophomore pitcher, Mason Molina. He's made four starts, 20 innings. He has 31 Ks. So, they've got a Jesus. pretty solid Friday starter, and they've got, like, five guys in the lineup who are really good. Uh, I think they could make some noise this year and definitely a team that I, I think got written off a little bit after losing Jace Young uh, and, and a handful of other kind of they, they had a lot of fourth and fifth year guys last year who were, um, you know, really good. You think about Parker Kelly who's in the Rockies system. He was one of them. And th- so lost a ton of experience, but they might be better even than they were last year, which is kind of crazy to think. Yeah, that's saying something. Yeah, they're number two, twenty, number twenty-two ranked right now. Uh, play Oklahoma State this weekend. So if you're around, um, Texas Tech is always up there. Their coach, um, what's his name? I just just had it. He's been there for what 10, 11, 12 years. It seems like just Tim. Yeah, Tadlick. Just yeah, he's a baseball coach, and whatever you throw at him, he's going to work with it. It seems like and make his team come to the top so texas tech red red raiders are here and they're back all right they have some sweet jerseys too always like what they yeah, throw out no, throw yeah. on out there um i got nothing i'm not gonna even diminish what you guys just threw out there um college baseball is fun it's still a good product it's only gonna get better this sec play um is gonna be fantastic uh just anything that's anytime it's on ESPN plus it's on in the background. I need to start watching games with volume. I, I think I could pick up on some names a little bit more, be a little bit more well-versed um, and make some terrible, more informed, terrible <laughs> picks um, out there for next month. But until then uh, enjoy the final of the world baseball classic spring training is going to be done. The season will be started by the next time we talk college baseball. And uh, as always, go rocks. Thank you for watching and listening. Please check out our link tree for more content.